Welcome to ProCAD's PNID software. Let's do a quick demo. Double click the PNID icon to start the software. In the Drawing Manager dialog box, select the standard to use. We'll use the Twin Lakes project for this demo. Select the new icon, enter a file name, and then double click the file name to open the drawing. On the left is the PNID toolbox, and on the lower left are the active settings. We'll adjust to suit the project. Let's start by inserting a border. Pick the border icon, select the appropriate drawing size, enter the data. This data can be updated at any time during the drawing session or future drawing sessions. Click OK to accept. Now we can start the PNID. Let's start by placing some equipment. We'll place a vertical vessel with a skirt, and we'll pick two points to define the size. We'll add a kettle reboiler, picking two corners to define the size again. And then we'll look at pumps, and we'll look at a horizontal pump. Click OK, pick the insertion, and we can reverse the direction if required. Now let's add some nozzles. Pick the nozzle tool, and then we can zoom up on the vertical vessel and place a nozzle just by picking a point and then giving the direction. We'll put some standard nozzle locations on this vessel. And one at the bottom for the liquid out. Let's add the nozzles to the other equipment and then take a quick look at the general locations. And a quick look at the pump. Now we'll add the off-page connectors for our process flow lines. And then put the data required, pick the insertion point, click OK, and then pick a location. And the symbol is placed. Let's add the rest and then take a quick look. So there's a couple local for the utility for the steam, and then a couple at the other end. And now we can take a look at our main process lines. Very easy to place. Select an insertion point using F8 with the ortho button to force horizontal and vertical lines. And our first process line is placed. We'll add a second one from the reboiler back to the tower. Very easy to do. Let's finish off the rest of the process lines. Let's take a look at the utility lines for the steam. Pick the tool. And again, draw the lines. Different colors, different line thicknesses to represent utility lines versus main process. Now we'll add some internal detail to normal liquid level. And these are just dashed lines that show up inside the equipment. Typical placements. Now we can add some instrumentation. Let's put a utility line straddling the normal liquid level, and then we'll add a level gauge. So we can pick the instrumentation tools and pick a discrete balloon, pick the center of our bridle, and then put in some information, LG for level gauge. Information can be copied to make drafting faster. So we'll add that level gauge to the back end of the reboiler, adjust it with some tools, and adjust the text on the inside to match our equipment.
Now we'll add some valves and fittings. So let's zoom up around the pump and put in some typical valve and fittings. Put in a gate valve in the vertical run. And then we can put in a reducer going into the pump. You can reverse the direction if required. Let's put in another reducer on the outlet side of the pump. This time we will reverse it. And then we can add a check valve. And another gate valve. So symbols are easy to place. Let's add a control loop to the pump outlet line. We'll start off by placing a control valve on the line. And then we'll add gate valves on either side for block valves. We can add a bypass line, so we'll use a main process line to represent our bypass. On the bypass line, we'll insert a globe valve. We'll add a drain valve on the upstream side of the control valve, three quarter inch size. And now we'll finish it off with a reducer on the other side. Now we'll add the instrumentation to connect the loop. So we'll add another discrete balloon. This time we'll add the transmitter. Then we'll add a couple shared balloons. One for the controller. And we can copy this down for our converter. Then we can add function identifiers, like current to pressure. And then finally, a local balloon with the leader for the control valve itself. And to finish off, we'll add the instrumentation lines. So we can add just a hidden line to represent electrical lead between the transmitter and the controller, and from the controller to the converter. And now we need a pneumatic line. Select our instrumentation lines. Select a pneumatic tool. And the software will produce a pneumatic line. Take a closer look at it. Let's add some text to our drawing. We can go to the Utility tab and then select the tools. Let's add the Equipment tag for the vertical tower. Select an insertion point, enter the tag name, and you can even underline it. Click OK, and the tag is placed. For the description of the equipment, we can select Equipment Description, select the insertion point, input the data, and I click OK, and the data is added. We'll add the rest of the equipment data, and then zoom up on it to take a quick look. Easy to do. Now we'll look at adding a valve tag if required. Select the valve, input the tag, and the valve tag is placed. We can add line numbers to our flow diagram. Picking the line number tool, selecting the process line, selecting the default line or one of the existing lines, 
and the tag is placed. We can add flow arrows, large or small, large typically for process. Select a direction or reverse it. And we'll zoom up, take a quick look at that. And it adds the arrows in for us. Do another one. Automatically finds the ends of the lines and places the arrowheads. For the utilities, we can use the smaller arrowheads. Pick the line, pick the small arrowhead. And it puts in smaller arrowheads for the utilities. And now we'll finish off the whole drawing. And then we can zoom in on another feature of our pumps. We've got some lines that are crossing. Let's trim out those lines. There is a trim tool that we can use to break the lines. Select the reference line. And then all lines that cross it, and they're automatically broken. Pick the line. You can select individual lines if, if required. And it will just break that one line. Let's take a quick look at the overall drawing. With all the data added. Lastly, save the drawing, and then file, and exit. It's that easy.